you. Thank you. As a child, I loved reading The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. The Lorax lived in a beautiful place, rich in wildlife and natural resources. Until one day, an enterprising explorer discovered it and saw economic opportunity. He could start a business, turning the natural resources, truffle trees, into products people would buy. He just set up shop and started to chop down a tree when the Lorax popped up to say, "Stop! I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees." Unfortunately, these words were ignored. Instead, the businessman decided to expand his empire, telling the Lorax, "There's no cause for alarm. I'm doing no harm. Business is business, and business must grow, you know." And grow it did, until it didn't. The resources ran out, the business went bust, and the land was left a mess. The beautiful place the Lorax lived in and loved was taken away to make way for making profits. Not an especially uplifting outcome, but what if this story ended differently? It could, if we were to radically reframe our understanding of human rights to extend to the natural environment and evolve our understanding of corporate responsibility. To incorporate respect for human rights, we could do better than business as usual. It was my mother, an elementary school teacher and Girl Scout troop leader, who first introduced me to the story of the Lorax. She battled cancer courageously for many years during my youth, and years later, I would come to learn of others who, like her, fought and lost similar battles with cancer. People who, like her, grew up in the shadow of Louisiana's Cancer Alley. This is the name given into an industrial corridor that extends between New Orleans and Baton Rouge by the people who live there, because it's lined with petrochemical companies, oil refineries, and toxic pollution. It has some of the highest cancer rates in the country, and the majority black populations living nearby are dying young. The lessons of the Lorax stayed with me long past my childhood. As a law student and young lawyer, I was drawn to the case of Nigerian environmental activist Ken Sarawiwa. Along with nine other indigenous ethnic Agoni, he was tried by a corrupt military government in a flawed proceeding and executed for opposing oil drilling happening in his region that was promoting polluting the air, the water, and the earth. Not unlike the Lorax, he spoke up. He was silenced. Over 200 environmental activists were murdered for their activism in 2020 alone. A third of the attacks were against indigenous peoples. His case, and the case of other environmental defenders like him, working to protect their community, helped me appreciate that there can be connections between business activity and human rights abuses. Human rights are universal; they're for everyone, everywhere. Civil and political rights, social and economic rights, cultural rights—all of these rights are related and cannot be separated. And now, a human right to a clean, healthy, and sustainable environment has been recognized by the United Nations Human Rights Council for the first time. It's about time. We're facing a changing environment, with more disastrous floods, fires, heat waves, and hurricanes happening more often. Nearly 90 percent of refugees now come from countries that are most vulnerable to and least able to cope with a changing climate. Weather-related disasters now account for more displacement than violent conflict. This has been true for the past decade. We must do things differently. We can do better than business as usual. Conventional wisdom has long held that the primary purpose of a business, the first responsibility, is to make profits for its shareholders. As the businessman in the Lorax explained, the aim is to grow. You know, reimagining corporate responsibility to incorporate respect for human rights 
including the right to a clean, healthy, and sustainable environment, would require that businesses count the costs of unsustainable and irresponsible growth. We can and we must move away from the old way of doing business. In 2011, the United Nations Human Rights Council unanimously endorsed a set of guiding principles on business and human rights. These principles provide that businesses have a responsibility to respect human rights. This means that businesses should assess impacts of commercial activity for risk to human rights. It also means that businesses should avoid contributing to or causing human rights abuses. Incorporating respect for human rights requires that abuses be addressed. Accountability is important. Whether these principles are put into practice will be up to us. Clearly, we benefit from business products, but sometimes some products are connected to human rights abuses. We benefit from the life-saving medicines made by drug companies. But what about the opioid crisis or the thousands of deaths due to overdose? Unequal access to essential medicines continues to be a problem during a global pandemic. Food and beverage companies provide us with life-sustaining nourishment, but often do damage to the environment in the process. Agribusiness is responsible for 11% of global greenhouse gas emissions and 90% of global deforestation. Each year, an estimated 200,000 people die from pesticide poisoning, mostly farm workers. Social media companies, internet search engines, algorithms, telecommunications companies all enable us to inform, entertain, and express ourselves. But there are serious considerations concerning discrimination, disinformation, privacy, polarization. Our choices can create change, and it takes many voices. By demanding that businesses respect human rights and incorporate respect for human rights into policies and practices, there are people, investors, consumers, activists, and responsible business leaders who are demanding change. They want businesses to assess human rights risks and to address human rights abuses. Publish What You Pay is a global network of environmental and human rights organizations. They work together to reverse the resource curse. This is where a place is rich in natural resources, but the people who live there live in poverty. The network's campaign helped to highlight the human rights risks of conflict minerals contained in our cell phones, computers, and other electronic devices. Their campaign to end forced labor and stop corruption led to legal reforms and reporting requirements. Now, businesses sourcing from certain conflict regions have to assess the human rights risks involved. Now, businesses are working together through the Responsible Minerals Initiative to improve the mineral supply chain and to make better sourcing decisions. Palm oil is a basic ingredient contained in many household products, from shampoo to soap, even our food. When the Girl Scouts found out that the cookies they sold contained palm oil that could be connected to human rights risks, they took action to avoid abuses. They insisted that the palm oil used in their cookies be certified and sustainable, produced in ways that reduce risk to human rights and the environment. After college students protested university logo apparel linked to sweatshop labor, the Fair Labor Association was formed. It audits and certifies the factories that supply global footwear and apparel companies. It also gives workers in the global supply chain an opportunity to be heard, a way to express concerns and to have concerns addressed. We are seeing a shift driven by these and other change makers. Change has come over time, not overnight. And change needs to be accelerated now. Be it the immediate violent deaths of environmental activists or the slow violence of living and dying in a polluted environment, we can call for it to stop. Looking back, 
I now realize that what I loved most about the Lorax was the creature's powerful commitment to stand up for its environment and everything in it, to speak for the trees. I invite you to consider ways that you can change the conversation. Are you an investor? If you have money to invest, know where your money goes. Be like the shareholder advocates at As You Sow. They're helping people to invest their values. You can put your money where your morals are to encourage more responsible business practices. Support shareholder proposals that promote respect for human rights and the environment. If you don't have investments, perhaps you're affiliated with an institution that does. Some college students have called on university endowments to divest from fossil fuels and to invest in a more sustainable, just, and equitable future. What about the things you buy? Look for labels. Learn where products are from. Ask how products are produced. Ask about environmental impacts. Find out if your purchases could be connected to, contribute to, or cause risk to human rights, and spend accordingly. Are you an entrepreneur? If so, consider forming a benefit company. This form of business organization supports working for good, not just shareholder profits. The Lorax was a lone voice. He left behind one word, unless. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. We have voices that we can use. And looking forward, expressing our ethics is an obligation. We can promote human rights in the environment. We can protect human rights in the environment. I believe our collective voices can convince businesses to do better than business as usual. We can move markets. Business has influence, but we have influence too. And we mean business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.